First of all, Secretary Perry, it's good to see you back again. Yes, uh, you Thank were here you. last in January 19th through your hearing. And at that time, I want the committee to know that, you know, we talked, we had a very good conversation, and, and you committed that when I asked that would you come to West Virginia, and you are coming to West Virginia July 7th to yes, see sir. Nettle and to see all the advances we've made in clean coal technology, and I appreciate that. And yes, sir. You are a person of your word, and I thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, I also remember, uh, Secretary, when we were governors together in 2005, I never forgot this. We were sitting in a uh, uh, Southern Governors Association meeting, if you recall. Yes, sir. Katrina was getting ready to hit. Uh, and I asked you at that time, I said, Rick, uh, is this a hurricane going to have any effect on you? And you said, Joe, I've been told by, by my weather people that it's going to miss us. It might have missed you, but you got hit directly. The, the results didn't miss us. The results did not miss you. I'll never forget that. And you had over a quarter of a million people come to your state. Yep looking for refuge, and you took them yeah. all in. And, and uh, Senator Murkowski, if I could just add one thing here, and I know this is a little bit off subject, but just I think it's important about working together. Uh, this is a Democrat governor of West Virginia and a Republican governor of Texas, and uh, I, I got a call from uh, the governor of Louisiana then, and uh, she said, can you handle 100, and, or she said, can you handle 25,000 people? And I said, send them. And uh, about 125,000 later, I'm on the phone to him saying, uh, need, hey, Joe, I need some can, help. Can, can you send an, uh, some aircraft to help us move some people? Because we had another hurricane that came in Amen. and moved Rita, all those Rita people. Rita came right behind you. Yes, sir. Anyway, and, and had it not been for, for Joe Manchin and, and the people of West Virginia and the National Guard of West Virginia, we would have had some people and some real sling, and I will never forget that, sir. Well, I, Thank you. I think that's the way I, that's the way we're supposed to work here, too. Yes, I knew how we did it as governors, but it's the way that should work in Congress, the Senate and Congress, and I, we're trying, and, and the chairman and I work very much along those lines. But anyway, we sent six, one, six C-130s, and we sent uh, 1,200 troops. Yep. And we worked well together. With that being said, I want to thank you again. And you're coming, and we're looking forward to your visit. Senator Capito is looking forward to your visit. And we will entertain you in a bipartisan way. So with that, we say thank you. Let me go to the thing I'm concerned about. Uh, I understand that the study of our grids reliability and resilience that you have undertaken, and I want to thank you for undertaking this, has drawn some criticism. I don't know why you would draw criticism from finding out how secure our, the grid system is and what it takes to energize this grid system. Uh, as being both former governors, I think we're on the same page. What's been uh, uh, best to let be left alone, we should be collaborating with the federal government because we've got to make sure this thing doesn't collapse on us. And uh, the study fits into that collaboration column. Uh, on, in West Virginia, uh, our existing installed capacity is over 90% coal. And we have eliminated all of the old plants. We have basically supercritical plants with scrubbers, low NOx boilers, bag houses, and we're looking for that new technology. Um, I believe that the Department of Energy uh, is taking a good look at this issue of how coal should play a part in our national defense, and I thank you for that. Um, it's not about one fuel type over another. It's how do we energize and secure the grid. So can you please comment on why you believe the study is so important and, uh, and basically focus on ensuring the reliability that the country depends on? I think you said when it's 115 degrees and they flip the switch, they want something to work. Yes, sir. Um Senator, it is, it is very much, uh, I think, one of the I'm, – I'm so glad that uh, we got tasked with yeah. uh, this grid reliability because I think it is important for us to have this conversation. Uh, I, I, I think all of us uh, would love to see um, blue skies and, and clean air everywhere in the world. So, everybody, uh, so they know we're talking about, uh, Secretary, we're talking about base load. Base load runs 24-7 uninterrupted. Yes, sir. And you have 60 days of coal laying there. You're not going to interrupt that. They're going to feed it, and it's yes, going sir. to give you power. Yes, sir. Nuclear gives you that. Gas yes, has come on strong. We're depending and, on it. And, and, and Senator, I, I, I'll just mention this in, in, in passing. Um, yesterday, there were places where they had either brownouts or blackouts in the western, in, in some of the western states. I, I, I saw this on. On the news, I'm not reporting it as guaranteed fact. I'm just telling you, we know that when there's that kind of stress on our our right. uh, our grid system, that we need to be prepared for that. And uh, so, you know, it's 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 so important that we economically and from a national security standpoint have these multiple sources of energy that will be there. 
when we need it, when it's called on. Uh, you know, having 60 days of coal on the ground, I happen to think is important. Having nuclear plants uh, that are, are, are functioning and being able to, to move the waste off site of those so that the, the, that industry knows that there's going to be a, a, a future for them is important. I think the natural gas uh, that we have been blessed to be able to retrieve now is an incredibly important part of that. Our wind energy and our solar energy and our hydro, all of those collectively are part of a portfolio that we've got to protect and making sure that our, that our grid is, when it's stressed to its highest levels, will still be able to keep that air conditioning running in a place that temperatures are reaching 120 degrees outdoors. I don't want to, I don't want to take that call that, that a, a family has been put in, in distress or even died because we didn't do our work to make sure that there is a base load of energy to take care of the needs that this country has 24-7, 365 days out of the year. Well, I think it's one of the most important studies you all have taken on, and I thank you for it because I think it's going to be imperative for yes, the sir. American people and the security of our nation that we find out how do we keep these grids alive and keep the energy flowing. Yes, sir. So I want to thank you very much. Yes, sir. Secretary.